hello friends welcome to my channel sql server log so today we are going to see how does always encrypted work in sql server so basically always encrypted is a security feature which is introduced in sql server 2016 and further improved in sql server 2019 to help protect sensitive data at the column level even when the data is stored in a database the basic idea behind always encrypted is to ensure that data is encrypted both at rest which is stored on the disk and in transit which means during communication between client and server with the encryption keys managed outside of the SQL Server environment. So we will see how does always encrypted work. We will see the process and uh, step by step flow of this procedure so this is the figure which explains about always encrypted process so here if you can see a step one request data so it issues query okay so the application will establish a connection to the database server is specifying that the connection should utilize always encrypted once the connection is established the application can then execute the query in the standard fashion now when this step one requesting data is completed okay now step two is request encryption metadata when executing a query that involves encrypted columns any plain text values intended for these columns must be provided as parameters and encrypted prior to transmission to the database. In cases where a parameterized query is executed, the client driver requests encryption metadata from the SQL Server to determine the necessary encryption actions before sending the query for execution. Now in step 3, it this return encryption metadata. So basically this is our application server and this is database server and this one is certificate stored and this is client driver. So uh, now in step 3 return encryption metadata SQL server analyzes the query text to detect whether it involves parameters targeting columns encrypted using always encrypted. This information is then transmitted to the client along with the encrypted values of any column encryption keys in use as well as the respective locations of the column master key. This encryption metadata is stored locally on the client machine to avoid the need for redundant metadata requests for the same query in the subsequent calls. Now when we see step 4 here, this one. Now after uh, step 3 return encryption metadata, the step 4 request column master key. So utilizing the information supplied within the encryption metadata, the client driver initiate request to access the certificates and keys necessary for required column master keys. Typically, these certificates and keys are stored in the certificate repository on the application server. In cases where there are multiple application servers, it's, it's essential to ensure that each server stores the relevant certificate and keys. Alternatively, you have the option to store your column master key in an external repository such as Azure Key Vault. Okay, so we have seen this step 4. Now in step 5, return column master key CMK the client driver acquires the column master key this client driver dot net client driver this one returns column master key now after that you can see step for encrypt parameters parameters directed at encrypted columns must undergo encryption to achieve this, the column encryption key retrieved from SQL Server for a specific column is decrypted using the corresponding column master key. Subsequently, the parameter value can be encrypted using the underlying key value. It's important to note that only parameters will be subject 
to this encryption process. If your query includes literal values targeting encrypted columns, these may pose an issue. To ensure the proper functioning of update and insert queries involving tables with always encrypted columns, values must be specified using parameters. Now after that, this is step 6, encrypt parameters. Step 7 is issue query. The query along with its parameters now encrypted following the previous step is transmitted to SQL Server for execution. This database server. After that, return encrypted results. In the case of a query yielding results such as in a select query, the results are returned. If these results involve encrypted columns, it's the encrypted values that are transmitted back. Additionally, the encryption metadata accompanies the result set, providing the encrypted column encryption keys and the locations of the column master keys for any encrypted columns within the results. Now after that, decrypt data. In the next step, when the results include encrypted columns, the client driver decrypts them before sending them back to the application. This decryption, uh, dis, uh, decryption process relies on the encryption metadata provided alongside the results. Similar to how parameters are handled, the column encryption key is decrypted using the corresponding column master key. In some cases, the column master key may have already been retrieved from the certificate store. If not, an extra step is taken to obtain the column master keys. Once the column encryption key is decrypted, its unencrypted value is employed to decrypt the data within the associated column or columns. Now it will give a written output in step 10. In the end, the results are sent back to the application, application server and any values that were initially stored in an encrypted form are now returned in their plain text versions. So basically this architecture you can say or this diagram or figure, it explains the process of always encrypted. I hope you have liked the video. Thank you.